welcome to Christmas Eve worship. We are glad that you have joined us on this holy night when we remember what God did for each of us and for the whole world through the birth of Jesus. We hope that you'll let us know that you were here. You can use the QR code that you will see on your screen. Or if you're worshiping with us for the first time, we invite you to text NEW to the number that you'll see. This evening, we are collecting our miracle offering. All of the funds uh, given to this offering go to support the work and ministry of five ministry partners who work tirelessly every day all year long to make a difference in people's lives, both here locally and around the world. A little bit later, we'll introduce you to those partners and the work that they do. In a couple weeks, on January 10th, we'll start a new worship series, Explore Your Faith, Keys to Discipleship. Whether you are new to faith or have been a Christian for a long time, we all have space in our lives to grow a deeper and a more richer faith. And so join us as we look to scriptures and as we look at some practical steps that we can each take to move ourselves a little bit closer to God and deepen our relationship with him and deepen our faith. We are glad that you are with us tonight. We invite you now to join us in the singing of our opening hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High. Luke's gospel says, 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. We light this Christ candle. We know God is with us. The promised one has come. The light of the world breaks through the shadows and the kingdom of God has come upon the earth. Let us pray. Loving God, as this candle shines, may we rejoice in the warmth of your hope. Be grateful in the light of your generosity. Find you in life's daily kindnesses. And may we proclaim our peace in Jesus Christ through this season of love and joy. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we have come again to Christmas to kneel before the manger in awe and gratitude for all that you have done and are doing for us. We remember that love came into the world when Jesus was born, and it is a love that sustains and encourages and comforts us in all things. We believe that Jesus came into the world to be a light that shines in the darkness, to bring hope in the places where it seems hopeless, to strengthen us in our weaknesses, to comfort us in our pain. Christmas gives us the promise that you are always with us, and for that we give you our thanks. On this Christmas Eve, we join our voices with those around the world and pray for your peace to come. Use us to ease the burdens of others, to serve those in need, to share compassion and grace with all. Forgive us when we fall short and transform our hearts and our minds as we strive to live as Jesus lived. Open our hearts to the peace and stillness that this night holds. Use us to shine your light into the darkness as we celebrate this greatest of joys. We pray all of this in the name of your Holy Son. Amen. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down, oh come on down, won't you come on down, come on down to Bethlehem, come on down, won't you come on down, shepherds, won't you come on down.
Mary gave birth to God's own Son. Sweet Mary gave birth born to come on down. Come All around the world, people will gather this evening. They'll gather with hopes and dreams and longings, and, and it will be maybe more so than last year, different than last year. I mean, some of us, Christmas will look very different. Uh, we'll be aware of who's not there family and friends who are not with us, those that we have lost this year to COVID. But some of us this year will find that Christmas pretty much looks the same. A a and even others of us who will find this to be a very special Christmas. Maybe uh, they got married this year or had a new baby or adopted a child or moved into their first home. We all come to this evening with our present and I think also with our past as well. You know, we've all been through Christmas after Christmas. Some of them we remember, some of them not so much. But they accompany us as we come, those hopes and dreams. And so, as we ready ourselves to worship, let's take a moment to center ourselves, to become more present in this time amidst all the distractions so that we might receive the hope and the healing that God has for us tonight. Let us pray. God, you call us and you welcome us tonight, inviting us to gather here in the stillness of this time our hearts are focused on you and your love. We come with hopes and dreams for peace, for health, for healing of relationships, for opportunities in the new year. And many of us also come uncertain what our weary soul needs. So, awaken our heart in this moment so that you might do in us what you began in Jesus on that first Christmas. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. One of my most memorable Christmases was when I was in college. I worked at a movie theater. And uh, one year I decided not to go home at Christmas time. And so I took a shift on Christmas Eve, and I took a shift on Christmas Day. Now, on Christmas Eve, I had a delicious dinner of a theater hot dog, that's a special kind of hot dog for sure, and popcorn. And then on Christmas Day, I had the nachos. Do you know what theater nachos tasted like in the 90s? They didn't even have the jalapenos to help. The theater at that time, of course it's different now, but at that time was super busy on Christmas Day. 
I, I didn't have time to go to church that year, but I did have time to think about Christmas and to think about what is Christmas really about? I mean, I, I think we, we often get to that place in our life where we, we think around this time of the year, what is this about? I think a lot of times we think about it as Christmas being the traditions we have. Wonderful traditions, beautiful traditions. But sometimes when we can't do them, we can't go the places, we can't eat the food, we can't see the people, we may wonder, is this even still Christmas? Here's the thing. It is. Christmas is much more than our traditions. Christmas starts um, with Isaiah. You know, when we started Advent, we do an extended Advent here, so we started six weeks ago. When we started Advent, we started with Isaiah, and we had three weeks of Isaiah. We heard from Isaiah 9 and 35 and 40, and we heard these verses. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Sorrow and mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. These first three weeks we talked about that God had not forgotten his people. And we talked about hope and how hope in the Bible is so different than hope in the world. Hope in the Bible is about this hope that we have, not because things are going to get better, not because we're going to figure it out, not because next year's going to be different, but we have hope because of God. Not hope in things, but hope in a person. That's where we started. We started our Advent journey and we were invited to, you know, lift up our heads and to to wait and to look for the coming of the Messiah. And then we turn to the voices from the New Testament. We, we heard from Mary. We heard from this young mother-to-be speak about how the world and its evil and corruption will not have the final say, and how God will send his Messiah to be with the people and to save them. We heard not only her words, but we heard the words of Elizabeth and Zachariah and Joseph and others. And now tonight, we gather and we hear of the birth of Jesus. So let's hear now from Luke's gospel. Eric will read it for us. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Tonight, we gather with these shepherds and angels, and we lean in to see this baby that is born. You may come tonight looking for hope or looking for forgiveness, maybe a second chance. You may come looking to rekindle joy in your life. You may come because You're seeking peace or health. 
we come and gather around this manger. Like millions have throughout time, we are drawn in by this simple story of love. Christmas says God loves us, not our ideal self, not the self where we have it all together, but instead God loves our broken and imperfect and messy and depressed selves. God loves us just as we are. It's amazing. We need this love, don't we? We need it this year. I mean, this has been a year. The election. People and families and churches and communities divided. People felt wronged. They felt judged. They felt lost. And then COVID. Again, people were divided. There was confusion. There was sadness. There was loss. There was illness and grief. And it's into this mess of a world that God comes, just like he did on that first Christmas. Jesus was born into a difficult world. We don't often think of that, right? We have our manger in our home, our nativity set, and we look at it, and it looks so idealistic. But really, in Jesus' time, there's no place for him to be born. Teenage mother, outsiders like shepherds, and then later wise men are present. The government in ruin fear on the rise. This is the world in which he came, and it makes you wonder if maybe God's design, in fact, is to come among us when things are not going well, to come among us in the mess of life. I think God does this because God knows we'll be a little more open to him, a little more willing This is the heart that is Christmas. This love of God that runs after you. This love of God that embraces you. This love of God that tells you, you, yes, you are the beloved. It's amazing. And here's the other thing that's amazing about it. After God tells you that you are loved and you are the beloved, God looks at all those people you despise and all those people you criticize, and God says they're the beloved too. And they are your brothers and your sisters. And I came to love you and them. And that this Christmas love is for everybody. God meets us tonight in the middle of whatever year it was for you, and not God in some vague understanding, but God born among us in the baby Jesus. I mean, this is what Christmas says to us each and every year, this radical thing that Christians believe that God looks like Jesus. The one who loved everyone. The one who welcomed us all. Jesus came to be among us. And in doing so, he offered to us a life that we cannot know without him. I love the Christmas story. It is a beautiful story, but make no mistake, it actually calls us to live in a different way because of this story. It calls us to live in the way of love. So I invite you to think about that. As I share with you this video, this is my favorite telling of the Christmas story. Watch.
The way of love calls to you tonight. So I invite you to lean into the glory of that first Christmas and stand at the manger and gaze at the child. Because when you do, you will be in the presence of the heart of Christmas. Let us pray. Loving God, you call us and you welcome us, no matter what. If this is our first time in worship or we have been away for a long time, it doesn't matter to you, for your love is for all. And you came to be born among us to show us this. So tonight, open our hearts to this love. This love you have not only for us, but for all. So that the world would no longer know hate or division. But that we would love as you love. Heal us. Awaken us and bind us to you and one another, all for love's sake. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Love incarnate, love divine. Star and angels gave the sign. Bow to babe on bended knee. The Savior of humanity. 
is the 12th year that we have uh, taken a miracle offering. Over those years, we have been able to support the work and the ministry of organizations here in Santa Clarita, specifically that deal with issues surrounding um, homelessness. And we support the work of uh, women and children around the world through Tears International. Uh, the work that's done in very rural Nicaragua with some of the poorest people in the world through Project Chaco Sente and Dr. Belinda Forbes. We invite you to help us continue to support the work that these organizations do by giving to our miracle offering. Watch this video. There are many different reasons people become homeless, and there are many different circumstances and needs that bring people to Bridge to Home. Maybe they're low on money, out of food, and are looking for a warm meal. 
Maybe they're looking for a safe place to sleep for a few nights. Or maybe they've fallen on hard times and have found themselves without a roof over their heads or the means to find their way back to housing. Across this country, there's few shelter beds for families. And those shelters that do take families in, they split families up. What's unique about Family Promise is that we keep families together. You are making a huge difference in our lives and in the lives of uh, the, our students our families and the Chaco Center community. We invite everyone to come down and see the miracles that your faithfulness enables us to accomplish uh, with God's guidance and help. the matter is, is that women and girls are the most vulnerable people on the planet. They're the most people in poverty, they're the most people who are kept out of school, and it's really, really important um, to come alongside them. You cannot change the world. You cannot make the world better for anyone if you don't impact the lives of women and girls. Good evening and Merry Christmas from the Barber family. From our family to yours, we wish you the best during this extraordinary holiday season. And we remind you that now is the time to be generous. For those that have nothing and those that have less than us, it is now time for us to step up and give. Thanks again and have a great holiday season. It is our tradition to close Christmas Eve worship by uh, lighting candles in the sanctuary and singing Silent Night as we go out into the evening. And so we're going to do that in a different way this year. We invite you to have a candle ready and lit. Uh, in a minute, you'll hear music begin. And when you hear Silent Night and see the words on your screen, we invite you to join us.
go from this time knowing that God's love is real and God's love is for you. Merry Christmas.